Hello game design students, hope you guys are doing well. This is video number three here in our little series about our top-down perspective point-and-click game. And so in the previous video we set up uh, some sprite movement here and anywhere we click our little sprite moves. So if you're not sure how to do that or you don't have this set up, go back and watch video two where we just add in some events and some sprites. Now, um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking this player sprite and we're going to add in some additional animations and then we're going to add in some events that trigger those animations based on um, certain movement. Okay. First thing we need to do is we need to take this animation one. We need to rename it to idle. Okay. I-D-L-E, which just means our guy's not doing anything. So really, this still animation is only going to show up when our player character is not moving at all. Okay. Now, we need to right click. We need to add a new animation and we need to rename it. We're going to call it walk down. And we're actually going to add in three more. So we're going to have walk down, walk right, left, and up. Okay, so add animation, rename, and I'll probably just edit through this so it goes fast. So we'll walk right. Walk left. Okay, so here we are. I have my five animations. Idle's already set up. Walk down, right, left, and up. We're going to put those in now. So we're going to start with walk down. And this is going to be um, a little more complicated of an animation, but you guys are to that level now to where you can do this. So we're going to open up a file here. And it's already got me to my gold knight things here. And you'll see if I open up my walk sprite here, it opens up this entire sprite sheet, which has... Four by four, 16 different sprites, <clears throat> and that's too many. But as you can see here, it looks like these. This is the walk cycle of him walking down. This is the walk cycle of him walking up, and then also left and right. So all of my sprites I need for all of my animations okay, are right here. So I'm going to show you the process of how to do this, and then... Um, I'm going to do it for all of these and I'll probably just kind of fast forward through it in the video because it's a little repetitive. So first things first, load up your sprite, okay, your sprite sheet. The next thing, we need to duplicate this in the bottom. So let me move my head so it's completely out of the way. Okay, and we've got uh, a frame right here. So we're going to duplicate this four times. The reason being is we're going to select and crop like we did last time every single one of these. So what I need to do first, I need to take my rectangle select and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I want to select like I did before, just my player character, none of the white space around him. Okay. So select that crop. I'm going to the next frame and I want to go down to the second row now here and I'm going to select all of that. Remember none of the white space around him, none of my next character to the side. Boom. Crop. Okay. Go down to my third character. I'm going to select just this character, crop, and fourth character. Okay. And crop. Now, what if you make a mistake? What if you crop it and you totally cut half of them off? Well, just hit hold control on your keyboard and hit Z, and it will undo it, right? I've been doing this for a while, and so I can do it pretty quick. You guys might make some mistakes like I did the first time I was doing this. Everybody does it, so don't stress. You can always undo it. But if I make a mistake, I can just undo it and then select and crop. Boom. Okay. So now I have my little guy here. Now what I want to do is I want to resize. And I want to apply it to the whole animation. So I want to resize every frame of my animation. And remember, I want it to be 50 by 50. Okay. Just to make them the same size as this. So my idle and my walk down are the same size. The last thing I need to do before I move on to the next frame or to the next animation is to make sure my origin point is right in the middle. So I select my origin point tool, I right click, I quick assign to the middle, and you'll see it pops this point right in the middle of my guy. And then I need to apply that to my whole animation. So I need to right click again, and I need to apply to whole animation. And so now every frame has this here. Now let's click on our walk down animation that we now have set up, and we are going to loop it. Okay, we want it to loop. We want it to play over and over. And what we can do now is we can right click on walk down and we can preview it. And there's our guy. And you can see those frames put together, make it look like he's just, just kind of walking. And if you want him to go really fast, 
You can turn the speed up. I'm gonna run really fast. Uh, I kind of like it at five. I think it looks nice, but whatever you want to do, that's totally up to you. Now, we're gonna do that exact same process for the rest of the animations. For walk right, walk left, walk up, okay? So walk right, I'm gonna load it up, and uh, I am gonna, I'm gonna do all this so you can see it, but I'm just gonna put it in kind of double speed mode here so we just get through the video faster. Um, and if you're like confused on how to do it, just go back and rewatch the last couple of minutes because it's all exactly the same. Okay, <clears throat> I am back here, so if you go here, and if you were watching that closely through all that sped up stuff there, you can see I made a bunch of mistakes, but I was able to undo them and fix them up. Um, but we should be able to preview, oh, there we go, that's not what we want. Why did it do that all of a sudden? Oh, it's because our origin point is way off. So we have to make sure our origin point is in the middle, and we have to make sure we apply it to whole animation. Now we should be able to there we go. So if your origin points are goofed up like that, all the origin points are super goofed up on there. Middle, apply to whole animation, right? We all make mistakes. I'm just going to make sure. Quick assign to middle and apply to whole animation. Quick assign to middle and apply to whole animation. So now, what is going on, dude? That is so strange. I don't know why it's doing that. Apply to whole animation. Preview. Okay, so now it looks good. And let's look at this. This one has them, so this one should be fine. Okay. This one has them, so it should be fine. Okay. Maybe I just messed up the first one. This one has them, so it should be fine. Preview. Okay. Whoa. They're working. They are working. So now we have all our animations set up. Now we just need to do the events that uh, put this all into motion and make it work. So animations are set up. Now we need to talk about something here, and that is angles. Okay. Um, and if you know a circle, so I'm actually going to open up this. You don't do this. Don't copy me here. I'm doing this just so I can show you how this works. Okay. So a circle. Um, has 360 degrees, okay? And if we talk about being right in the center and we go all the way around, we measure that in degrees and there's 360, okay? Now, for the, um, for the, what am I talking about? I totally lost the word, it happens all the time. Okay, for the sake of our sprite animator here, we need to understand where the, where it's actually counting the degrees from. So it counts this straight out to the right as zero. It's not gonna let me write that, zero. Straight down, 90. Straight out left as 180. Straight up as 270. And then zero is also 360. So if we tell it 360 degrees, that's where it counts it. Now what we want is if our sprite is facing anywhere in here, okay, we want it to do the walk up animation. If our spread is facing anywhere in here, we want it to do the walk down animation. Anywhere here, walk left, and anywhere here, walk right, okay? So what that means is we need to know those specific numbers. So this one's gonna be 45, this one's gonna be 135, so just trust me on this, this one's gonna be 225 and this one's going to be 315. So if we're between 45 and 315, we want to trigger the walk right animation. Same with this, same with this, same with this here. Okay, hopefully you understand that. I'm going to exit out and then I'm going to delete this sprite. Don't leave that there. It looks stupid. Don't even have, you shouldn't even have done that. I did that to show you what that looks like. So let's go to our event sheet. We're going to add an event. And if our player box is moving, okay? And we're not gonna add an action, we're gonna right click and we're gonna add a sub event. 
So you need to right click over here left of this player box, add a sub event. And this sub event is if our player box is between angles, and like I said before, between 315 and 45, we wanna add an action. We want our player sprite to set animation to walk right. Okay, now watch what happens when I do this. Oh, dude, the animations are freaking out on me. Okay, but you can see the animation, it's totally goofing, but <laughs> it's doing what it's supposed to at least. Let's go look at our walk right animation and all of our origin points are totally screwed up. Why is it doing that? That's, that is crazy. I've never seen it do that. Okay, apply to whole animation. Okay, let's just hope and pray that that was done correctly. So let's start it up here. See, and that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, and you'll notice the animation never switches back because we haven't triggered that yet. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna add in another, we can oh, add in another sub event. And it's gonna be the same thing if player box is between angles. And this time we're gonna do it between 45 and 135. So this is if they're facing down. We're gonna add action, player sprite, set animation to walk down. Done. We're gonna add in another sub event. If our player box is between angles, 135 and 225, we're going to add our action, player sprite, set animation, walk left. And last sub event, if our player box is between angles, 225, and 315, then add the action, player sprite, set animation to walk up. Okay, so I, I zoomed through that, but if you're like, hey, I want the details, just go back to the very first one, just because it's a little repetitive here. Okay, and let's start this up and see if it works. Our animations, yeah, that animation's messed up, that animation's messed up, so is the up, they're all messed up. I don't understand why it's doing that. Very interesting. Well, I'm going to have to go in and hopefully figure that out and update this video here at the end. But you can see as I move around, <laughs> the animations are screwed up, but it is working the way we want. When we're facing a certain direction, our guy faces that direction as well. So, okay, I am going to do some investigation on this animation, and we're going to figure out what it was <laughs> when I come back. So we're back. Um, I figured it out. I don't know what it was, but I just went in and I just went and typed in all of them to just be 25, 25, just to make sure. And that seemed to fix it. Um, so hopefully that was the case. Is this game still running in the background? There we go. Um, now we just need to add a couple more events and they're actually gonna be new events to make our player stop the animation walking. So we're gonna add event and player box and we're gonna go down to on arrived. So on arrived, we wanna add an action, player sprite this time, and we're gonna set the animation to idle. So mean, that means when it arrives to the place we wanted it to go, it's just gonna go back to the idle animation. Okay, let's add event. And we're gonna click player box. And this time on hit solid, we're gonna add an action. And once again, we're gonna set that player sprite animation to idle. So if we run into a wall or something, he'll also stop walking. So let's hope and pray the animations didn't goof up. All right, they're still working. So if I get to where I'm going and I stop, they'll just face forward. If I run into a wall, boom, we're good. And there it is. We got the animations figured out. It's going. The video's a little long, so I'm going to edit it up to make sure that it's not freaking out on you guys. But right now, you should have a nice, cool little map with a nice little character that's animating. And the character might look... I might edit this because if you look, he looks like way wider on the side. The side view looks like he gets like super super big and it doesn't it looks weird when you go from the top view to the side view to the down view it's throwing me off that's something i'll probably change off screen you can mess with that if you want but um overall this is very nice i hope you guys are having a good game in the next video we're going to add uh, just a few more things give you some objectives some things to pick up um make it more than just a walking around simulator so i'll see you guys in the next one bye